Good morning, Roughnecks. Wrangler here, and we're going to take a little, we're going to do a little premiere here on Reyes, who has just absolutely gone out of his way to lie off his ass this time. With a backdrop that looks like a hotel, he, you know, running from a warrant for a family vacation that was probably paid for with a GoFundMe for legal funds that he'll probably still try to use as a tax write off. He managed to remember to pack all of his recording and studio equipment. Does that sound like a family vacation? I know my wife would kick my ass, but I digress. Anyway, in this one, he's going to lie his ass off, and we're going to call him on every single one of them. Anyway, guys, enjoy. Hey, what's up, guys? Long Island Audit here, back again with another video. Coming to you live. I've, we have a lot to talk about today, so let's get right into it. So, Stay tuned to later in the video where I'll be going over the supporting depositions for my original arrest charge in Nassau County. I have received those as part of discovery, so stay tuned to the end for that. First, I want to be clear about what exactly is going on here because it's been going on through multiple videos now. So I just want to have a clear and concise way of telling each and every one of you what is going on in Nassau. Okay, well, let me sum it up for you, Sean. You were trespassed from a place you had no business at. You went back, you were arrested for trespassing criminal. You went back yet again, harassed and stalked the police officers. And then you secretly and illegally recorded them and then lied when you were asked if you were recording. Then you were arraigned and that wasn't good enough for you. So you went and harassed and stalked the police commissioner's wife after you made up a bunch of lies and things accusing him of things created only in your mind is is that where we're at oh yeah and then when they went to arrest you on your other crimes you ran like the bitch you are now are we caught up and now you're in hiding somewhere on vacation but my guess is that hotel backdrop is actually wherever you you know normally film at because you couldn't handle your legal affairs and be a good citizen but yet you did what? You had time to pack up all your studio gear to go on vacation? Or is it because you were planning on using it as a tax write-off? County, New York. So it all started on August 28th of this year, where I went inside the Department of Health and Human Services in Nassau County to conduct a First Amendment audit. I was there to peacefully exercise my rights, as I always say in each one of my videos. I was also there to investigate the government. I have received multiple complaints that people weren't getting the services that they need and they were be tr being treated horribly. On top of that, I was there to file a FOIL request. When I went there, they told me I couldn't film because of some arbitrary sign that wasn't backed by any official policy, to my knowledge. So... The, what happened was we went in a back and forth with law enforcement and I, and the, the building closed. So nothing was resolved that day. I went back the next day, and when I went back the next day, that video you haven't seen yet because they had seized my camera's evidence, and they will not give it back to me. Wow, three lies. Chuck, right off the bat. One, as you say in each one of your videos, but, dude, your own channel name is just liar. You're just so dumb you misspelled it. Uh, two, here's the fun part. You were trespassed from that building on day one. Those signs, they have all the backing of law. Want to know why? Because that's not a public forum. It's a limited to non-public forum, which means that if you don't get right with the rules, your ass gets bounced. That's how that works. And then three, your reason you don't have your camera equipment is it wasn't, it seized, yes, as fruits of a crime, evidence for the prosecution when they convict your ass. And you have pissed enough people off now, Sean, that they're going to, they're, you're not going to get any deals this time. You're not going to get to just walk away. You're done. So I went there recording yet again, spoke with the officer. An attorney for the Department of Social Services, David Carl, handed me a two page memo explaining why I couldn't record there. I didn't have a chance to read it. He gave me the memo. I tried to read it to understand why I wasn't licensed or privileged to be there. Why does a sign 
override our constitutional rights. But before I can do that, Officer Kenneth Keller that you've seen in the original video and the subsequent follow-up, he said, do I have official business here? I said, yeah, I have constitutionally protected business. I was about to tell him about my FOIA request as well as me asking questions of my government. And he immediately said, put your hands behind your back. I told him I'll leave under threat of arrest. But before I could even get that out, he said, nope, too late. You're under arrest. They wanted to arrest me because they did not want me asking questions of the Department of Social Services. I was arrested, released about six hours later on a desk appearance ticket. When I was arraigned, the district attorney's office and the district attorney of Nassau County is Ann Donnelly. She's an elected official. She was just recently elected, I believe, in 2021. She submitted, her office submitted to the court during an arraignment, eight stay away orders of protection for two law enforcement officers and six government employees. First of all, Sean, you illegally videotaping inside that building is not a constitutionally protected activity. That's not official business. And you know this. Why do you make me be mean to you? All right. Second, you were given protection orders because you started doxing and you and your people started doxing police officers, government employees, home addresses. That's not their official address. That's their home address. That's their private residence. All right. And again, you were given protection orders because you like to stalk and harass your victims. You are a violent, convicted felon. You show up and you scare the wives at their private residences, claiming that you're there to see them. But if you'd ever had a real job in your life, you would know that it's the middle of the week in the middle of the day. They're at work. You earned those protection orders. Eight stay away protective orders. My lawyer did an amazing job arguing that these orders would be unconstitutional. There was no legal basis. There was no basis whatsoever. No one was saying that I threatened or raised my voice or used any foul language, anything. No one was saying any of that. The only reason why the judge, the judge said, I'm going to issue the order of protections, the stay away order of protections. You cannot go near their business, their home, anything, all because Apparently, there was no evidence of this, but apparently someone on the internet posted their public home addresses. Not me. I have never seen it. They didn't even have evidence of it. Don't you think if that was the case, they would have had a screenshot of it? But they didn't bring any of that to court. The judge just took their word for it that some random person in the world posted public address information. And because of that reason alone, eight stay away order protections were issued by this judge, Judge Norman Samet, the arraignment judge. Now, that's clearly unconstitutional. It's clearly a violation of my constitutional rights. It's trying to silence me and keep me away from the government. Even Actually, wrong again, numb nuts, because the information was posted on your channel. You are responsible for your channel. It's in your name, just like mine is. If one of my supporters posts your address or your license plate numbers, in a comment section or in my chat, I'm responsible for getting rid of it. YouTube is a private platform for profit. It's not a public forum. It's not, it is limited because it can be censored. You know this, you're monetized just like I am. So, swing and a miss, stupid. Now, if they email me your plate numbers, that's different. But if it's put out there, because only I can see that, but if it's put out there for the world to see on your channel, you're responsible for it. And I highly doubt a judge issued eight protection orders with zero evidence, not in not in a liberal state like New York. I don't think so. Even though I have I am no threat to the government other than exposing tyranny and corruption and promoting transparency. That's the only threat that I serve to the government. And that's a legal threat of just promoting transparency. I mean, I have never once had any issues been charged with any violent crimes against the government. So I don't understand the legal basis of it. That's why I was very disappointed in Judge Norman Samet's decision. So now I have eight stay away orders against me at this point after the arraignment. I cannot go to police departments. I cannot, I'm basically banned from Nassau County because my lawyer asked, okay, if you're going to um, grant these orders, can you at least allow for incidental contact? For example, if by accident, I ran into any of these people through the course of a day conducting lawful business. The judge did not go for that whatsoever. So even if I say that because it's so important, because even if I go 
and the police department pulls me over or comes to my house and brings me back to the third precinct or brings me back to the department and I'm next to these government officials, I could, and based on what I've seen so far, will be charged with a violation of the order of protection through the Unless you violating the order is why you're arrested and taken back to the third precinct, you're not going to be hit with violating the order if you're arrested and taken back to the third precinct. That is the biggest bunch of bullshit I've ever seen. Wow, Sean, that's bad. I can't believe people give you money. And by the way, folks, he's already started a new legal defense fund for this new arrest warrant that had over $12,000 in it last night. Why do you idiots keep giving him effing money to go on vacation? Court. So it's kind of like they're trying to set me up in that way as well. So fast forward, I have a rental property on Long Island. Nassau County detectives on the orders of police commissioner Patrick Ryder crossed county lines. They obtained a warrant for my arrest when I went back to the Department of Social Services to file my FOIA request and to ask my questions that I needed to for my story. I was not overtly recording. No one had any issues with me. I asked my questions. I conducted my business. I was there. No one had any problems with me being there, and I left. That video is up on my channel. They got a warrant signed by a judge through the district attorney's office, Patrick Ryder did, for criminal trespass in the third degree. So now that warrant, they took that warrant and they crossed county lines. I am told they never even let Suffolk County Police Department know that they were looking for me. They unlawfully stopped my tenant and made him identify himself. Let's be clear, Nassau County has no jurisdiction in Suffolk County to be pulling people over for traffic offenses, even though he tells me he did not commit any traffic offense. First of all, it wasn't unlawful. It's called concurrent jurisdiction. If you look that up, you'll see what I'm talking about, Sean. They have an arrangement. Almost all counties and all states do. They had a lawful arrest warrant for you. They came to get you, period, end of story. The only way it would have been unlawful is if they crossed state lines. Swing and a miss. All right. Second, you just said your tenant. That means the property's in your name. You're claiming that he was pulled over, but you brought us no proof of this. And thirdly, it's a lawful arrest warrant. I guarantee you it starts off with, to any law enforcement officer in the state of New York, you are duly authorized or notified that this individual, Sean Reyes, etc. You have a lawful warrant for your arrest. You talk about being a good citizen, about transparency, and about doing the right thing, but yet you are literally running from the police who had legal paperwork to arrest your fat ass. How is that doing the right thing, Sean? It doesn't matter. They can't just pull random people over and identify them. That's Gestapo behavior, ladies and gentlemen. So they pull him over, violate his rights. They said, oh, you're not the person we're looking for. They find out where I live and they come up on me like gangsters from a movie, like the mafia, like thugs that they are. I'm driving down my block and this is exactly what happens. A Honda Civic, a dark colored Honda. Wait, they're rolling up gangster on you in a Honda Civic? Really? That's what you're going to go for. You're driving like a $75,000 Tesla and you're trying to tell us that they tried to run you off the road in a Honda Civic. Come on, man. Even you can't believe this much of your own bullshit. Civic pulls right in front of me, running me off the road. I had to go off road to get around him. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know if I didn't know their law enforcement. There was no lights, no sirens, nothing. Just a Honda Civic, an older Honda Civic pulling right in front of my car. I, I felt like I was in a third world country about to get, you know, carjacked or something. So instinctually, I went around the, the Civic off the road one into my house. All right, so you are so you think the thugs are coming for you and coming for your life. So what do you do? You lead them to your family? That makes about as much sense as Matthew from New York Public Tour. Swing and a miss, Sean. And this is the video here. I'll show it to each and every one of you right now. This is what happened. You tell me if this is policing cuz I've talked to many police officers regarding this video. This is not policing. So you see me there, I'm getting out of my car. You see right here, the black Honda Civic. I go inside because at this point, ladies and gentlemen, I have no idea who this person is. I have two little children in my home. I have no, and I have two nephews and I have a nephew and a niece that live with me. I have four children. 
Does this include the child that you knocked up your wife with when she was 14? Under the age of six in my home. I don't know what this man is doing. He just tried to run me off the road. No lights, nothing. I have no idea who this is. Let me stop it right here. He runs after me. Do you see this man here? Do you see any badge on him? No. He's not presenting himself as a law enforcement officer whatsoever. No lights, nothing. He realizes I went inside the house and he stops. He sees my security camera and look what this criminal does. He doesn't pull out his badge. He puts up a baklava. He puts up a mask covering his face once he sees my security camera. Does that sound like law enforcement to you, ladies and gentlemen? That they cover their face in a baklava because they see a security camera? What does he have to hide? Why didn't he take out his badge? Look at him. And he's covering his face as he goes back into the Honda Civic. And then he pulls out to the street. And let me show you the other video. Now, his partner, I guess, I don't know, again, I have no idea that at, the, at this point that, that these two men are law enforcement. You see they have masks on, both of them. Look at that. They said he ran inside the house. Who are these people? Who are these people? Now you can kind of see shiny badge or whatever, but they go back in, and this is what I'm talking about. This is dangerous. This is dangerous. They didn't even let Suffolk PD know. An hour later, after letting Suffolk County PD know, according to according to my sources, an hour later, they let Suffolk PD know we're in the area. We're, we're looking for sure. I would love to see some proof of that. And you say an hour. I would love to see that on the damn timestamp, Sean, but you're not going to show us that, are you? And secondly, if you saw badges, how was it dangerous? They weren't flashing weapons. And yes, I'm sure the guy, when he realized you had ring cameras, probably did pull up a balaclava for the simple fact that you're known to dox and publish addresses, home addresses of cops and their families, and then you go stalk and harass cops and their families. That perfectly makes sense, you crack baby. Supporting doc depositions and, and the actual statute to see if this applies. Do those look like cops or they look like thugs? Look like gang members, mafia members, whatever you want to call them, cartel members, whatever. This is not the United States of America where why wouldn't he just identify himself as a police officer? Does, wouldn't that make sense? Wouldn't that wouldn't he say police? Well, maybe he did say police, but you were waddling away so fast from him. You just didn't hear him. And I know for a fact when they came to your front door, they identified themselves as police and let you know you had a warrant. But you probably didn't hear that either because you were hiding in the damn attic like Vegas Valley. Swing and a miss, dumbass. Wouldn't he put on lights in this unmarked vehicle here? Why didn't he do that? I can only think of one reason, that he wasn't there in a police capacity at that point. And then they see that I have, look at them, masks up. For what? What do you have to hide if you're law enforcement? It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. This is scary business what's going on here. This is, you know, I feel like I'm in a movie because I'm uncovering some serious. What movie? Snitch? Waddle of shame? Seriously, I want to be Vegas Valley? Is that what movies you're referring to? You're a moron, Sean, and I can't believe people buy this shit. Hey, how much money have you raised in your new fake fraud legal defense fund again? Corruption. So the reason that Patrick Ryder, Commissioner Patrick Ryder, hates me and wants to hurt me and wants to lock me away and silence me is because I am exposing through various sources in, in, in and outside of the department his tyranny and corruption. No, he wants you gone because you made his wife fear for her life. And by the way, Patrick Ryder didn't get the warrants on you. The prosecutor filled out the warrants. She gave them to a judge. A judge, based on the evidence and probable cause she presented, signed said warrant. You know it, and you are running from it, which makes you even a bigger coward than you were. I'm making an entire video that will come out on Thursday that will explain from 1990 when the commissioner of the police department in Nassau County was arrested for beating a man while he was handcuffed. That's a true story. You might not find it in Google anywhere, 
but I found it in a 1990 New York Times article. My source gave it to me. He was arrested. How did that just get scrubbed from the internet? How does no news agency like News 12 talk about that when he was appointed as commissioner? He went from detective sergeant, ladies and gentlemen, which is one of the lowest ranks in the Nassau County Police Department, all the way to acting com deputy commissioner, acting commissioner, and commissioner, passing at least six different ranks. How did he do that? Because when he was detective sergeant, he was in charge of the asset forfeiture fund. And I'm being told the allegations are that he was using that fund to, to pay off politicians on both sides. I guess you have no idea how that fund actually works, do you, Sean? Do you know that those funds have to have judges' signatures in order to be allocated to anything? Not only that, they are closely, closely watched and scrutinized by the federal government. I bet you didn't know that, did you, Sean? I guess it's just another baseless allegation from you, and I can't wait for you to be sued for your irresponsible slander. ...sides of the aisle and use that fund for his own gain because that fund has never been audited. If he's so, if he's not worried about what I'm doing, why send these thugs to, to my house? Why not just hand over the asset forfeiture fund documents so I can have them audited by a forensic accountant and we could just, you know, we can move on. But he has something to hide. Million. First of all, uh, no, you don't have the authority to audit anything, Sean. You're not an auditor. You're a frauditor. Secondly, they don't have to give you a damn thing. And let's face it, dude, you're not going to pay a forensic accountant to audit anything. You'll fundraise for it because you're a fraudulent little bitch. Tens of dollars in asset forfeiture funds that have never been audited because he thinks he's untouchable. And when I got a hold of this story, he realized that I wasn't going to stop. So now he's trying to silence me. A police department sending over 15 officers across county lines to look for a journalist for a criminal trespass warrant, ladies and gentlemen. Does that make any sense to you? It doesn't make any sense to me. This is despicable behavior. Law enforcement across the country that I've talked to. And what the real question is, why isn't Nassau County Executive, the police commissioner serves at the behest of the Nassau County Executive? I would think so, right? It's a conflict of interest. That's why these questions need to be asked. I really don't care what goes on in his marriage. I don't care what he does on his free time. But if it's affecting how he became police commissioner and skipped from detective sergeant all the way up to um, the police commissioner, I'm going to Google right now on the spot. Ridiculous. There's so much more. Thursday morning, 10 a.m., I'm going to be coming out with a video that really exposes um, Patrick Ryder. Right now, I had a pre-planned vacation just to get you up to speed to where I am right now. I am on vacation with my family. I won't. Got it. You're on the run from an arrest warrant. Yeah, we figured. Be back until October 10th. Um, I won't be back till before, right before my court date, which is in Nassau County, which is October 10th. It was a pre-planned vacation with my family, and I already had told the court about it. I had informed the court during my arraignment before a warrant for my arrest was was uh, granted before an issue before they issued a warrant for my arrest. I already had told the court on the record. I'll be getting those transcripts and making a video with the transcripts for my arraignment that I was going on vacation and my attorney is out of the country currently. So this is not something that, you know, I made up after the fact because there was a warrant. I'm not running from a warrant. You know, it's I had a play pre plan. Except for the arrest warrant you're running from, right? Plan family vacation out of the state. So I'm with my family out of the state. You know, I will turn myself in. I, I'm going to try. I want to turn myself into the district attorney's office. I don't want to be anywhere near Nassau Police Department because for the reasons that we just talked about in the 37, last 37 minutes, corrupt tyrant police commissioner writer who allows his department to break the law with impunity, with no consequences. Why would I, and I'm exposing him for all the tyranny and corruption over the last 30 years, why would I turn myself into that maniac? My life could be in danger. Because it's required of you by law, you know, law, that thing that you say you're all about. I truly believe that. So I will turn myself into the district attorney. I also want to set up a peaceful protest. So stay tuned to the channel for that. But I definitely want to turn myself in. I have no problem. I've, this is the eighth time I've been arrested, ninth time now. 
And I've never once missed a court date. I have never been criminally convicted of any of these charges while auditing. So I have nothing to run from. The law is on my side. The Constitution is on my side. The only thing that I don't want to be near are corrupt uh, is a corrupt police department who want to hurt me and silence me. So I hope the district attorney is watching this and we can come to some sort of resolution where after my vacation is over, I will turn myself in peacefully to their office, be processed. If you want to put a bond, put a bond, I'll bond out. It doesn't matter. I need to continue to work on my story. I need to continue to report to all of you. All the public contact information is in the description below. If you'd like to peacefully redress your, your grievances to your government for redress, as always, stay safe. God bless. I'll see you in the next video. Long Island audit. Peace. Okay, guys. Uh, when he puts that up on Thursday, I will be all over it. And we will roast his dumb ass with both the facts and a little witty banter and prove just what a piece of trash he truly is. And, you know, I think somebody maybe in the New York State's Attorney General's office ought to compel a DNA sample from him and that child he claims it isn't his that looks just like him that he claims he didn't father when the damn mother was 14 years old. So, you know, maybe that's something that they ought to look into. Anyway, guys, I'll see y'all tonight. We're going to cover Jeremiah. It's Wrangler. I'm out of here. I love y'all. Have a good one.